Mm -mm. Yo, 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 we are finally back. The man to man part is back March 6, 2023. I'm one half of the pod. Darius Butler got my co host Antoine Bethea. What's good? What's good? What's good, man? We've been off off the pod for a few weeks, moving around, man. How everything on your end? Man, everything good, man. You know, well rested, man. Happy to be back. Talking some good ball. Um, obviously, you know, we got a lot more NBA. We got your F1. Mm-hmm. That's that, that that's that kicked off. So again, man, happy to be back with the fam, man. Yeah, for sure, man. Same here. Happy to be back with the squad, man. I know you've been moving around. I know you spent some time at the combine. We obviously gonna talk about that. See if you picked up any scoops out there. Uh, I got combine talk, obviously draft, you know, pre-draft talk coming up. Dead, huge deadlines coming up as far as franchise tag with some big tags with some big quarterbacks across the league. Obviously, leading with Lamar Jackson, A. Rod, Derek Carr, a lot of quarterbacks potentially uh, on the move. I feel like shit, this is a yearly occurrence now yeah. um, in the NFL, the NFL offseason. Uh, as you mentioned, F one. The schedule kicked off uh, this past weekend yesterday with the Bahrain Grand Prix. So obviously, I have some some takeaways from that. Um, Start talking a little NBA. You know, it's that time of the year, making these late season pushes for playoff predictions. Hit the same game parlay last night on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Obviously, that's who we are presented by, our presenting sponsor, FanDuel Sportsbook, number one sportsbook in the country. Uh, we got a lot to get to. Uh, obviously, a lot of comments, questions from the people from the squad. Uh, use that hashtag M2M Live on Twitter if you want to get your – uh questions comments concerns mentioned on the show man but um anything else before we get to the intro let's get it hey you heard it man let's get it Yes, sir. Back, we back. A B, man. What you want to kick it off with, man? Man, you know March we're gonna, six, we, Monday. We're gonna dive right into it, man. NFL combine, one of the biggest, biggest, biggest job interviews on the oh, planet. Yeah. Um, so a lot of a lot of a lot of good stuff coming out the combine, man. This past week, um, a lot of talk. Obviously, I think we can kind of start off at the quarterback position. Um mm-hmm. Everybody, everybody, all 32 teams are looking for that guy that can lead them to the promised land. You know, you look at the young quarterbacks in the league right now. You got the, the Patrick Mahomes. You got the um, the Joe Burrows. You mm-hmm. I know your guy in there, Justin Herbert. You got a lot of guys that are leading these organizations um, each and every year. We're going we gonna to yeah. sit here. We're going to talk about it coming from the combine quarterbacks. Um, our Indianapolis coach sitting at four need a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, a number of quarterbacks, I would say about four quarterbacks, um, that people are talking about that could potentially go in the first round. Um, you see here, and for the people that can't see, you got Richardson out of Florida, you got Young out yeah. of Bama, Stroud from Ohio State, and um, and Will Levis from Kentucky. From mm-hmm. what you've seen. Who do you think would be the first quarterback off the board? And do you think any one of these quarterbacks helped themselves at the combine Man. this past week? Uh, I think CJ Stroud put on the show. I think he got the best tape. You know, you put on his tape and I, I saw him boots on the ground in the field in that Peach Bowl against Georgia. He was um, very, very impressive uh, for Ohio State. That would still be my pick. If I had them one pick, if I was had my selection, if I'm the coach GM, and I could take any of these quarterbacks. I'm taking CJ Stroud, um, just based off of what I've seen from the tape. Uh, now, if you ask who was the biggest winner of these quarterbacks from this combine, 
Yeah, it's AR fifteen. It, it, it's Richardson, no doubt, hands down. Um, his production wasn't where I wanted to be um, at the collegiate level. A lot of people were comparing him to Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson. You always got to compare guys to somebody. Uh, but Cam Newton and Lamar, they were su super uh, productive. Cam Heisman winner, national champ at Auburn, with not much help around him. Lamar Jackson Heisman, and that uh, was a tremendous player at Louisville as well. AR fifteen didn't have that production. But his measurables, his his physique, you know, 6'4", 244, ran a four four, jumped the forty vert. Um, you know, his videos coming out of him windmilling, doing all these things, freakishly athletic. Um, can he play quarterback at the next level? Will obviously, be the question. Uh, but I think he helped himself, uh, you know, tremendously with what he did with the, you know, he threw the ball as well. Um, you know, his, his measurables are unbelievable. Levis, you know, live arm, young. You know, weighing in over 200 pounds, I think that was big for him as well. Uh, that was a big question mark with him, 5'10", I think 204 he weighed in at, didn't throw, will throw at the Alabama Pro Day. Uh, but AR-15 helped himself the most, I would say, from these uh, prospects. But uh, I would still take C.J. Stroud with that number one pick if I had it. I know you were boots on the ground out there in Indy. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on these top four prospects and what we saw on the field and then kind of, I guess, what, what was going on behind the scenes as well with people talking? Yeah, man, I think you said it, man. Uh, Richardson, I think he helped himself out a tremendous amount just with uh, the show he put on on the field, you know. Uh, but you, you talk about it, you know, people talking about it. You always want to go back to the film, especially at that position. Now, obviously, um, yeah. the measurements, you know, the 40 and um, all of those things are good, but you have to accompany that with, with the film. And to your point, I know a lot of people are saying C.J. Stroud, Young, um, has the best film out there. But again, you know, as as a as a team, yeah, you young, picking, young, as, they have some. as a as a team, you picking, um, you need you need help at that position. Who's available at that time when you pick? You know, yeah. um, and like you said, Richardson, man, is, is he a guy that you can you can count on day one? You know, I'm a I'm a big believer. We talked about it a lot where you know you bring a young quarterback in a certain situation where you can afford it and let him mm -hmm. let him let him chill for a little bit. You know, obviously certain situations are different. Guy got to come in and got to start um, ASAP. Can Richardson be that guy for you? But I think with, you know, you got Chicago at one. We're still trying to figure out, you know, what it, what they're going to do with that with that number one pick. Um, that's the question. So that's the million dollar question right now. They putting out they putting out the smoke screens too. Ryan Poles he coming out of the combine. He said it's an over fifty percent chance. He told Albert Breer. That they trade that number one pick. Uh, you think that's bullshit, or you think that it's I won't believe anything right now, you know, <laughs> uh, especially leading up to the draft, man. You know, um, <clears throat> if I'm a GM, I'm 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 saying a bunch of different stuff to keep people in the edge of their seat, you know what I mean? Yeah, just to see what people would throw at me to offer whatever the case for that first round pick. Um, I, I see some truth to that, you know. I think they have a very talented talented quarterback. Where they wouldn't have to sit at that that number one pick and take a um take a QB feel like they can trade some picks and get some um you know get some get some work for that to to, to put some guys around some extra pieces on that team. So what what, what would you do? What would you do? You 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 knew I would trade the pick. Year? I would trade it. Pick. You good I'm with Justin it. Fields? Yep, yep, Justin Fields, man, and um you know, get some added pieces to that team because I feel as though they do have some pieces to that team. You see what um what Fields was able, was able to do on the field last year. You add some pieces around them, you know, second year with the coaching staff, you know, I think you could build some. So for me, I would trade the pick. Yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you. I, Cause I think even if, if you stay, if you're able to stay in that top, you know, four or five, I think you could still get a, a blue chip pass rusher and that, that's which way I would go I feel like those are the toughest positions to get locked down in the league is obviously a blue chip at quarterback I think Justin Fields um obviously he showed his ability dynamic ability with his legs I think the first couple years showed some some you know some things with his arms obviously it's a lot of room for growth there and I think that starts with the offensive line as well weapons system all those things um but I would go and try to get you know Will Anderson Maybe that guy from Texas Tech, one of these blue chip pass rushers, because they rarely hit the market when they're already proven. So uh, Will Anderson, I think he would have probably been a first pick in last year's draft out of Bama. 
came back and had another good year. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would trade back as well, man. Barrett, Chicago got a lot of money to spend too, so they, they can make some moves this offseason that can kind of you know bump them up in that in that NFC if everything goes right, man. So I'm right there with you. I trade that pick and keep keep rocking with Jay Fields. I don't see any of these quarterbacks. Potentially, I guess, but you know, potential get motherfuckers fired, man. Uh, exactly. So yeah, I, I, I stick with Jay Fields. You you never you never know. You rolling the dice, you know. Yeah. I don't think you might have would have said, you know, in the history of, of of when we've been we've been watching the draft, it might be a few a few mm -hmm. guys that we can say, all right, he's gonna be a dog. Regardless of the way he goes, he's gonna be a dog. But again, in this draft, man, it really is I'm a roll of a dice because. Yeah. You know, you never know what's going to happen. You talk about injuries. You just talk about situational things as far as the organization and wise. So you never know. You never know. Yeah. So green is the get the grass is not always green on the other side. Yeah, man. And then a lot of these teams and you're in a position if you are that GM or you're a head coach. We know, hey, you got to win. You know, now it's like two, three years. You got to be able to turn things around and show a significant improvement. And a lot of these teams that we've seen in recent years make aggressive moves and jump up into that top five and take a quarterback. It's, it's hit or miss, and it's been a lot of misses, whether it be, you know, Sam Darnold, you know, who knows where he'll go with the rest of his career. Trey Lance, we haven't really seen much of him yet. Um, who else been jumped up for? Uh, Mitch Trubisky, they jumped up there to get him at two. Um, yeah, so – these prospects that always, especially this this time of year, you go from the season and then draft, you know, Anthony Richardson. Is he worth that risk? Probably to a lot of teams because you, you see him in person. I heard he he blew the interview process. You know, he blew the doors off of that process, which is always good for a quarterback. Um, a lot of people love Levis. People love these big quarterbacks with these live arms. Um, so we, we, we shall see. Uh, Wilson, they trade up for Wilson, for Zach Wilson. Top just, it just goes to show all these experts. <laughs> we have any expert takes? Hey, man, yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot that goes into it. A whole a lot. lot. Into it. So, again, man, but again, I think these four quarterbacks, they have a bright future. Um, Again, hopefully they go to a situation that's conducive to, to, to them as their, you know, their playing abilities and things of that nature. So definitely yeah. going to be interesting to see where these four guys – um, end up at yeah man as it stands right now the odds on FanDuel sports but once again I present sponsor these are the number the pick number one pick overall odds Bryce Young is the favorite right now at minus 190 CJ Stroud right behind him who I just said is my guy well, I would jump up there and take at plus 350 Anthony Richardson plus 600 Will Anderson Plus twelve hundred, Will Levis. Plus fourteen hundred, Tyree Wilson. Plus thirty five hundred, and then Jalen Carter um, down there. Plus four thousand. So um, those are the odds right now on FanDuel Sportsbook for that number one pick. Where you going right now, AB? Man, I'm um. You got a hot hundred right now to bet. Where you, where you betting that hundred on the number one pick? I'm gonna go probably Bryce Young right now. I probably gonna go with the favorite, man. Um, go with the favorite, because I feel I, I, it's gonna be a quarterback off the board. I, I'm right there with you. I agree. Um, so I will probably go Bryce Young right now. I think this hype machine, man. I think, I think, I think, I think Richard gonna end up. And I think that's good value for my money too. Plus six hundred. You think Richardson gonna go one? I think he's gonna go one, man. I think he's gonna go one just because you know every everybody has question marks in this class. You know, CJ, uh, you know, everybody's gonna knock the Ohio State quarterbacks. You know, um young, he he's small, small frame. People comparing, you know, he measure his measurables, <laughs> height, uh, weight wise. Was very comparable to Kyler Murray, but you know Kyler Murray was freak athlete. First round pick in baseball, yeah. yeah, baseball, football had an unbelievable arm. Um, and he's been banged up, seemed like every year. So, um, you know, obviously not the biggest frame. And then Levis, 
you know, I think he's a prospect where it's a lot of upside as well. But AR-15, I think when you see a guy like that, and he's, you, I don't think we've ever seen these numbers across the board for a quarterback. 4-4, four, four, 40 inch. So, and if he throws the ball well, he's impressing in these meetings. I think somebody jumps up there and takes that risk at AR-15 and 1. So, that's why I put my hot 100 on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Give me AR-15 at plus 600. I hear you. I hear you. A lot. So, so again, I think it's a, I think it's going to be a new trend where I think teams, at some point, let me write that down. Teams at some point going to stop sending a lot <laughs> of their front offices to the combine. Because to your point, you say it's a, it's a lot of hype. You know what I'm saying? And oh yeah, and, and well deserved, and well deserved because he 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 did well for himself at the combine. Um. But again, I think a lot of, you know, just hearing a lot of people talk, like you have to watch the film. And I think oh, yeah. the, only, the only knock on AR-15 is just, just the amount of snaps that he's 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 taken. Um, so I definitely think somebody's going to take a risk, but at number one, I don't see that one. I think, you know what? I think, I think Josh Allen his development, his success, and people always just, you know, talk to Josh Allen and don't talk about the other things. You know, the co we always talk about it, the coaching staff. You yeah. know, we saw Brian, Brian Dayball, coach of the year this year. He had a lot to do with Allen's development. Bringing a guy like Stephon Diggs over and other weapons around that, but definitely that number one guy obviously had a, a, a huge impact on Josh Allen's ascension as well. Um, so I think Allen's play in Ascension will help Richardson. I think even Daniel Jones, a guy like that, who obviously I think is still a lot of room for improvement there, but his ability to use his legs, he can make the throws, has a strong arm. Neither one of those guys I don't think was great or very productive on the college level, but scout saw, coaches saw something in them that said, hey, we could take these guys at the top of the draft and make them into better players. And I think that'll help uh, with Anthony Richardson um as well so uh but yeah we're we gonna see man is it you know this is the time of the year where everybody had their opinion but uh plus 600 i go there uh bryce young he was the kind of lock at number one for a while um and i think he helped himself at weighing in at over 200 he probably had probably two gallons of water uh in in his belly when he was out there yeah. but good on him you know, you know that was the go-to. Hey, man, get you, get you, drink you a gallon of water, man, before you get on that scale. Get you a bottle of what? Or two. Hell yeah. Uh, what you want to jump to next, man? Mm -hmm. Well, any any other stories that kind of jumped out at you um, during the combat? I know mine. Blake Freeland, um, old tackle from BYU. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he got these bunnies from, but. Um, why the thing he what he jumped a uh a 37 inch Damn. vertical at at at, at the O line? Yeah, O line. And sure, Ooh. I think he ran like a he ran like a four four nine eight in the 40. A what? I think he ran like a four nine eight. Oh, oh, I thought you, you said thought I said four four. I you said, yeah, I thought you said four four. Oh no, 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 no. Hold on, wait. Who is cuz? But again, nah, man, you know, when you go to the, when you go to the combine, it's one of them things like, okay, this is a, a place where you want to hurt your stat improve your status, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you really kind of talk about it. Um, listen to some guys, you know, just talking about like the uh the 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 postseason all star games and things of that nature like these are things yeah. senior bowls um these are things that are supposed to help guys and not hurt guys right so mm -hmm. you can't go out there and critique two days where you know receivers you know he's running routes and another quarterback that he's that's throwing to him they don't have that time and things of that nature so you can't really hold that stuff against them which some people can but yeah. these type of things are where you know players go to and you help your status. And when, mm -hmm. you know, like an old lineman, when you go out there and you can jump a 37-inch vert and then you can go out there and run a 49, I look yeah. at that and, like, okay, obviously you got to go back on film, but it's like, okay, this is an athletic old lineman. Like the, the, yeah. the type of D lineman that's coming into the league, that the Hassan Reddicks and things of that nature, like you looking for some some old lineman that can move, that can bend. Um, so, again, I think Blake, man, he might have made him 
made himself a little bit of money just yeah. off that athleticism alone. Oh yeah, you definitely gonna jump on some boards just off that that's that athleticism score. A lot of these scouts gonna look at when you do something like that at the combine. So he definitely helped himself. Um, we don't have the brand on here, but the receiver from Ohio State that mixed missed a bunch of time this year, Jackson. Yep. Yeah, Jackson Smith. I, yep. I smooth, smooth. I, very quick. His uh, you know, forty time wasn't a blazing forty time. I think he. I think he's actually gonna run in his pro day. And people expect him to run well, but his short shuttle, the L drill, and then you know just move out there, man. And obviously, he was a great. Uh, a lot of people thought he was going to be the best prospect out of these Ohio State receivers. You had the yeah. uh, offensive rookie year last year, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave was right in that conversation as well, and I think he fits right in this Ohio State uh, receiver mold. So um, heard some very some. I think Chris Carter heard Steve Smith speak very very highly of him as a prospect so he'll be somebody i'll definitely keep my eye on that big tight end out of georgia yeah um, right here. Don yeah donald washington, washington yep yeah, he, he grabbed a lot of attention with the one head catch but you know seeing him i saw him on the field as well two times uh peach bowl and then a national championship just to look like a man of bucks boys out there um you know should be a good inline blocker as a tight end and then obviously he's got some receiver skills as well so i think he helped himself a ton as well but you know we always go back to that film obviously as players you know that film is the most important i think mcdc had a comment about that you don't want to get blown away too much from these guys doing these things shorts and t-shirts but there are things that can definitely help yourself you put on that film and they say hey man i don't really know he looks good but i don't know how how fast he really is if he has that breakaway breakaway or that chase down speed and then the guy gets out there and runs up you know four five sub four four and that answers all those questions. So um, love to see it for these guys. Like you said, man, the biggest biggest job interview these guys are going to ever have, man. So um, I'm obviously rooting for them all. Facts, facts, facts. <clears throat> um, well, football talk, though. Um, tomorrow, I believe it's tomorrow, the deadline for uh, Lamar Jackson. Where's the Lamar Jackson? We got... um. So are they going to do the exclusive franchise? It's going to be non-exclusive. Non-exclusive, I believe, is around 32-ish million for the quarterback. Exclusive, maybe like 45, I want to say. But And obviously nobody can touch him. If you do the non-exclusive tag, other teams can get involved. The Ravens will have to match. Other teams will have to send two first-round picks. Uh, where do you think this thing going with uh with Lamar, man? Rumors are Eric DaCosta, the GM for the Ravens, was down here in South Florida, uh, negotiated with it. We'll see where that if that turns out, if that brings any deal to fruition before that tag deadline tomorrow. But how do you see this thing ending with Lamar, man? Uh, so I don't see any deal getting done by uh by tomorrow. So I I think we should expect um hearing that franchise tag. Um. I hope they I hope they're able to get it done, man. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm a, I'm gonna think positive, man. I hope they can get it done. Because if not, man, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a while for the Ravens, man, to get back on that train. You know, if they let mm -hmm. they let uh Lamar walk out that building, man. I think it's gonna be a while just because of just how that that offense has been been set up. For the past few years, yeah, it's been set up <clears throat> for eight to succeed, right? It's been set up for him, their offense to run through, 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 through Lamar, and for him to walk out that building. Even though I think that offense is already already going to take a um, take a turn, bringing in a new OC, I think it's going to be um, it's going to be quite some time. Yeah, that man, that when I saw the OC hire. And they said, I remember the Ravens or a report came out that that they said that um, Lamar Jackson will have some input. And what is the Ravens offensive coordinator name? His, his name has slipped my mind at this moment. But I know he's been the coach for a while. I've been back and forth. He was a Georgia offensive coordinator for the last couple of years. And obviously, they won a national championship, but that's college. So been back and forth a lot of time in college, a lot of time, you know, back and forth pros. Not a big fan of that, especially if I'm a quarterback trying to get my long-term deal. I'm a quarterback that's trying to uh, have, be a, a place, a destination where other re wide receivers want to come, you know, free agent wide receivers want to come there. You got receivers speaking out 
Uh, Todd Monken. Yeah, there we go. Got a lot of people speaking, receivers and people in that building speaking out uh, in a not great manner against the franchise, against the training staff, some coaches, the offensive system, all these type of things. You don't, you haven't really seen from that Ravens uh, culture for a while now. So right. um, that's something to keep an eye on. I think a lot of that has to do with how you, they've been treating their franchise quarterback. We've said on the show plenty of times. Um, I think Lamar Jackson has been, you know, the nice guy uh, to his fault at this point. You know, I don't think he should have showed up last year before having to deal. You look at his peers, a lot of these people have got a lot of money and haven't done the things that he's done on the field. Um, is he going to get 230 fully guaranteed like Deshaun? I don't think so. I think that'll remain an anomaly with how these owners kind of move. And Deshaun was in a different situation where he was almost an unrestricted free agent um, while being on the team. But he was able to court these different deals, um, being in the prime of his career and obviously being super talented. So I don't think anybody else kind of gets that number. But I think Lamar should definitely come in at least around 200 million fully guaranteed um, before he touches the football field again, man, his talent. And then you continue to build his offense around him. You continue to get weapons. And, and just like all the things I talked about with Josh Allen, offensive mind, great offensive mind, great offensive weapons. And then we can kind of see what Lamar Jackson can really do in this league. And he's already shown that he's a great quarterback. So will they figure it out? I don't know. I'm losing. I'm losing hope. And depending on what tag they put on him next tomorrow, if they put that non-exclusive, I think he's out of there. I think somebody comes in and get him two first round oh, picks no up question. and give That's him two hundred plus ASAP. That's a no brainer. That's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. I think he'll have a bunch of teams knocking at his door if he gets that non-exclusive tag, man. And again, um, wishing for the best because again, I think. What he's been able to do up there in, in Baltimore, what he's doing in the community, how the community loves him. Stand up guy, keeps his nose clean. He's doing it the right way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully they'll be able to get it done for the Ravens' sake, for real. And then even for Lamar's sake, you know, he deserves it. Yeah. He deserves it. Yeah, I get we'll, we'll kind of skip past Aaron Rodgers because who knows what's going on with that situation with him. Coming out the darkness retreat, he got to make a decision if he want to play or not. Um, but Danny Dimes, your guy, Danny Dimes, pay my man. But he bet on himself going into hey, this year. Man. Giants didn't pick up the fifth year option. They obviously had a chance to. They they declined, and he obviously had to go out there and bet on himself. It's been a lot of reports coming out about the number that he wants, and, and then a lot of people saying, a lot of experts say, I wouldn't pay him more than this number. Hey, look, you, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you can negotiate. And I think Danny, uh, Daniel Jones is in a good in a good spot right now. He's in a great his, spot right now. But what would you do? What would you do if you, you uh, what is it, Joe Shine out there running the show? That's not nice. Man, yeah, play, Shine play the there. man. And as all players, all players, you should be able to go out there and negotiate for as much money as you can. Damn I'm right. Sure any of the experts say or what anybody at home sitting their asses on the couch say, if you're in that position, if anybody's in a position with their job where they can negotiate and the number is what the number is, of course, I'm going to go $5 million higher. Just, you know, whatever the case may be. So I think and I hope they get it done again. When you look around the league, the landscape, you have to have a guy at that position who can get the job done. Okay. This is kind of the first year that we've seen, okay, you know, a lot of question marks on Danny Dimes. Mm -hmm. I always thought Danny Dimes was a was more than capable of playing the position. Now that he has some consistency at the coaching in his uh, quarterback's room, I think he can continue to build and grow as a young player. Mm -hmm. And again, I think it's perfect timing for him. <coughs> Pay the man. <coughs> hey, you heard him. Pay that man. And, and, you know, you can obviously look at his, his passing stats. They don't look great on paper. Um, but he, and, and we saw a couple comments up there while you were talking, um, he's able to move those chains, you know, with his legs. I think it was the playoff game where it was one drive where he ran it, that playoff wild card win. He probably ran it six, seven times in a row on a drive. We saw that get, you know, help get the Eagles all the way to the Super Bowl as well. That quarterback been able to, Jalen Hurts been able to use his legs. A lot of growth um, to be made there 
for Daniel Jones, uh, he cut down those turnovers. I think that was his biggest issue coming into this year is cutting down those turnovers. And uh, you're obviously not paying a quarterback forty something million dollars a year because he's not turning the ball over. Uh, but once again, you look around the league. I feel like what probably at least 10, 12, 13 teams still have questions at that quarterback position. So if you do have a guy that you see the potentials there, didn't have a great supporting cast at the wide receiver room, but he got a lot of production out of that room, uh, in my opinion. Um, I think I'm with you. I think I would pay Daniel Jones where I wouldn't be anywhere near the top of that market or a five, six year deal like that. If you put the non exclusive tag on Daniel Jones, I think this is a little different, a lot different from the Lamar Jackson situation. I don't think a bunch of teams will be knocking at that door to trade, you know, a couple first round picks and give them a five, six year fully guaranteed deal. Uh, how do you feel about that as far as the Giants putting that non exclusive tag on him as opposed to that exclusive? <clears throat> I agree with you. I don't think um, teams will be knocking at the door um, trying to give up <clears throat> those first round picks. But again, <clears throat> I think the Giants, Daniel Jones, I think they I think they come out of eye and they get a deal mm -hmm. done. I think so. I think we shall so. See, man. We shall see. You heard, you heard. So you you want Lamar to stay in Baltimore and you want Danny to stay in New York. Yeah, man, because we <clears throat> we always see, man, for a lot of times, you know, in some cases, you know, in certain positions. It's a it's a good thing, you know. Okay, I did what I was able to do here. Um, I appreciate you guys for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go my way. Um, but then at times we see it, it don't work, and I just feel like <clears throat> with Danny Dimes, we saw snippets of what he could possibly do on the day ball. And you talked yeah. about it, you spoke about a day ball, and with Josh Allen Buffalo, what he was able to help get him to a point in his yeah. career where. We talk about him being one of the top quarterbacks in the league. Can he do that? Um, same thing with, 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 with Daniel Jones in New York. Again, you got Saquon. We don't know what's going to happen with Saquon Barkley. Um, and then again, get some more weapons outside for Daniel Jones. So I think that's a good situation um, for Danny Dimes. <clears throat> On the Lamar situation, man, <clears throat> I feel like it's getting uglier. It's getting uglier rather than getting yeah. prettier. Um, and to your point, you was like, you know, I, I don't know if they can come to a, a agreement, come to a conclusion where Lamar stays in um, in Baltimore. I know it's a lot of teams out there that would love to have oh, yeah. uh, a guy taking snaps with the ability that he has. So I, I, I hope both of them, both of those guys, can get it done where they at right now. Yeah, we 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 shall see, man. We shall see. I hope so too. Um, Derek Carr. Another quarterback out there that, uh, you know, people connect him to the Jets, I think the Saints. Uh, we'll see where he ends up. I think I think you put him in the, in the right right team. You know, Derek Carr just so uh, inconsistent, I guess. Like, he has flashes where it's like, damn, this, this dude, like, he, wanted, he, he could be one of the ones. And then other moments you look at late in the game, it's like, bro, what, like, what was you doing? Uh, so he, he, he definitely got to figure it out. Um, but most important position in ball, so it's always a lot of talk about that. A lot of combine talk, quarterback talk. We'll continue that, obviously, as the offseason goes on. But uh, we got a little pre-recorded podcast read before we get into some other things. Um, anything NFL-wise you want to touch on before we, I guess, shift gears? Man, um... What else going on? Take a on piss when we play this too. Say it again. I, need it. I said I'm gonna go take me a little quick piss while this ad read. You might need to go get a little tea, some medicine ball, bro. Medicine <clears throat> ball, of Starbucks. Nah, I, but I, uh, I can't do all the Starbucks. Oh, you got you got a coffee? You got a new coffee shop coming up or something? Nah, 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 nah. I'm just saying, I <clears throat> I got my go to when I go to Starbucks. Oh, okay. All right. Well, shit, Breaking man, news. Y all... Oh, 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 oh. What we got? Hey, they talking about like their car going to the Saints. Uh, I don't believe it. unless uh Nikiva ain't here. If, if Nikiva ain't posted. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> If a key ain't posted, ain't real, but Derek Carr to the Saints got some weapons out there. 
Um, but obviously, Kamar is dealing with some stuff off the field. We'll see what happens with him. Chris Olave had an unbelievable we'll rookie see. year, solid sure. defense. We'll see. That would be interesting. I don't think that really moves the needle. It's, it's a lot of question marks in the NFC South. Panthers, what do they do? Where do they go? Uh, Falcons, yeah, they, they obviously drafted Ritter last year, just got rid of Mariota. Bucks. Damn. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. That shit up for grabs out there. Up for grabs down in NFC South. But um, somebody said check ESPN. I got first take on, on ESPN right now. Might have to check my timeline with this little minute. But um, hey, y'all check out this FanDuel Sportsbook ad. And we'll see y'all on the other side. The midway point of the NBA season is here. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel. America's number one sports book because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes drained, all of that. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay, my favorite. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com backslash M2M live. That's FanDuel.com backslash M2M live to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm trying to find because uh, I had me a night. There we go. There we go. Last night. Had me a nice little SGP last night, man. Uh, so it started off with the one you see on the right. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Luka, all scoring 25 points. And then Luka grabbing eight boards as well. And once I saw the, the odds on that Luka, uh, 25 points was like minus 900. I said, man, let me get that off. I don't want that. That's not enough juice for my uh, SGP. So I put Booker Durant, Kyrie scoring 25, Luka grabbing eight boards. Uh, I think they sold this up probably with three, four minutes left in the game. So it's pretty, I know it would be a lot of buckets in that one. That was one of them games. Dallas, Phoenix, a lot of buckets on that court, man. So we're on a little roll right now on my uh, NBA SGPs. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook. Use that tag. Use that M2M Live when you sign up and get that no sweat bet up to $1,000 back, man. Mm -mm. Yes, sir. What else we got, man? Ooh, we could get in some F1 stuff. Bro. What you want to get into, huh? Uh, you can jump into your F1. Woo! Hey, it's back, man. It's back, Formula One. Finally back. First of 23 Grand Prix uh, yesterday, I believe. It was the Bahrain Grand Prix, March 5th. Uh, and shocker, shocker. Max Verstappen, <laughs> Red Bull, got the win again. Wasn't even close. Uh, just a dominant race getting the end. Uh, so I, I can understand how it can be hard for some new people to get into the sport right now because Red Bull on a little stretch right now. You can see the, the standings right here, the results. Verstappen, Perez, uh, both Red Bull cars, uh, one and two. Fernando Alonso and the Aston Martin, he came in three, uh, which was very, very impressive. So he was on the podium. He had a great, a great drive yesterday. Carlos Sands at four. Hamilton, Stroll, Russell, Botas, Gasly, Albon rounded it up. So those are the driver standings on the left, and then the constructors team standings on the right. Uh, should be a fun year, I say, outside of Red Bull. Uh, George Russell, he was interviewed. Mercedes Benz driver, he was interviewed after the race, and he had a quote that said, "Hey, Red Bull, after the first race of the season, Red Bull has got this championship sewn up." I don't expect them to lose another race this year. So um damn, one of the one of the races saying that from another team. <laughs> and that's Mercedes too. <laughs> Man. And uh so this is my takeaways after the first race. Uh easy work once again from the Bulls. 
P1, P2 from Verstappen and Checo. Uh, impressive day from Fernando and Aston Martin. Uh, Stroll, Atlanta Stroll did well also. I think he finished P6. Mercedes, they got to figure it out. Ferrari, shit show already. Um, Charles Leclerc didn't even finish the race. He lost his engine after replacing the power unit before the race even started. And then just a horrible start for one of my squads, McLaren. Lando Norris, he had a terrible qualifying. Hey, one race. of your squads? We had one of my squads. How many, squad, how many squads you got in the F1? I'm <laughs> you know what? I don't really have one, honestly. You know, I was a I, I'm a I'm a obviously a newcomer to the sport still. Um I move for everybody. Obviously, Lewis, Lewis Hamilton, he was the one guy I knew probably before even getting into it. And the only black driver on the grid as well. The dominant man, one, one how many of the teams goals. you got, man. So uh, I obviously root for him. Uh, I don't have any teams yet, man. I like the drivers, man. So it's 20 drivers on the grid. I like Lewis Hamilton, obviously. I'm a fan of Leclerc. And I like, I, I hate to say it, but I like Verstappen, man. Verstappen the dog. He's obviously dominant, dominant car, but I like his mindset and how he drives as well, man. Fernando Alonso put on the show yesterday in that Aston. So, um. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I haven't picked the team yet. You haven't picked the team, team yet? All right. Nah, not yet. <laughs> we'll get midway through. Not yeah. yet, but it's 10 teams. Red Bull, so, Ferrari, Mercedes. So I guess I, I guess I got to pick one. It ain't like the NFL where it's 32 teams. I didn't grow up liking the team. I mean, I think everybody grew up loving Ferrari. Just a car. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I end up with two teams. You got a team? Definitely don't. Come on, man. You not, might just go ahead and pick one. Not, not yet, man. My man already said, like, Red Bull going to win the jump already. That's after that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he has no confidence at all. Or he's just a small man. He's just a realist. Like, look, I, I don't see him with my own eyes. I already see what they doing. Look, man, we, we racing for second. Man, not even second. That's unfortunate because you – so Mercedes – they had a stretch of, of, of dominance where uh, I think Hamilton, Lewis Hamilton, won like seven in a row, six, seven in a row. Should have been eight. Got cheated in that last one. But once, once you got that driver, and obviously Max and Checo are dogs, uh, dogs at driving it, and you got the machinery on point, you got the, the strategy and all that, that's always on point. You got those three things lined up. You see that first race, like, oh, shit, these boys, these motherfuckers picked up where they left off. And Mercedes, they was – I think four and five, they were kind of in that mid. And then Aston Martin, it's been a lot of hype around their car and their development. And uh, Fernando Alonso, also a two-time champion in his world. He's he's old as hell. They've been in the game 21 years, 22 years, I believe. So it'd be interesting, man. But yeah, I think Red Duel will be dominant. And uh, as far as FanDuel, man, we got to be better options there as far as betting the sport. Got to be able to put some parlays together. Should be able to put more bets into where teams are going to finish in the constructor standings um hey i want i think aston martin is going to finish higher than mclaren and mclaren is going to finish higher than that team i think that'll bring a lot more interest and a lot more betting into the sport but um get it done hey, what the hell do i know man I, hey, I'm, I'm reaching out i'm trying to get it done and i should have nice little f1 super boost for next the next uh grand prix which is in Jeddah, i believe so um we shall see, man. I, I'm still gonna be into it. I still be. I still watch. Speaking of watching, did you watch UFC 285? Yeah, I, yeah. The goat. Man. I wasted. Uh, I wasted my money for that quick ass. <laughs> man, in the crib, getting the ESPN Plus. Gotta see John Jones go out there and, and get it done. He's been gone away from what? Been gone for what? Whoa, three years? Yeah. Gone three years, returned. I was a concerned too. Came back. I'm looking at them like, uh, look a little body, look a little stank. A little stank, but <laughs> when you the goat, they said officially the goat of UFC man, and did it quick, quick, and did it quick. I feel man. like dude, oh boy, had a chance to get him in the like right before uh bones got him in the in, in his submission i feel yeah, like oh boy yeah, got him in the headlock that's but he was buddy kinda... called too until so <laughs> john jones got them from the arm under the chin <laughs> bro you ever been in one of them, Hell, one of them, one of them I mean, 
I've been in like, a real like, like back in the day, big bro put me in a mean ass headlock. Yeah, yeah. But I, bro, it ain't that when you when you got that 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 spot arch like that. Ain't nothing you could do. Ain't nothing you could do, bro. Just please, please, please don't break my neck, bro. Please, then, stop. you got don't, it. Don't let somebody get to moving with it. Like, oh shit, yeah, I can't do nothing. Yeah. Hey, you got, it. you got it, boss. You got it. So, uh, the goat, hey, man. On, on, on. <laughs> so you know, as athletes, right? You know, you put a lot of training into that that moment, right? So you know, you got. Football, you got OTAs, you know, you're going through the playbook, man. You're out in the field, you know, you're getting your footwork right. Come summertime, you conditioning, you know. Then the season comes, you know, you start your week off on Monday to get prepared uh -huh. for this Sunday. UFC, you got your training camp, right? Training camp is X amount of months, you know. Hey, look, heavyweight fight against one of the greatest, you get in the ring. 30 seconds, shit over with. As a, as a, as a corner man, like what you tell your fighter? That's, hey, it's tough, man. We got to bounce back. Let's try to try to get a rematch. Let's, you know, hey, it is what it is. Just like training for the Olympics or something like that. And that's a lot tougher because you only get one shot every four years. But um, that's tough, man. Like everything, you put everything into that shit. And then you go out there and you, so we saw it happen with some of the great boxers, Tyson. Getting amped up for a Tyson fight, you out of there in a minute. Should be like that. That's a goat. Hey, that's a goat for a reason. I think yeah. that goat debate was kind of sewn up a few years ago. He came back, different weight class, did it again. Uh, I would like to see him and Francis go at it, though. I know Francis uh retired, but I would like to see that fight. I would I would pay. That's I got good. ESPN plus already, but I get ESPN plus plus for that one. That's that's rough, man. Training that's my tough. ass. Training my ass off, man. Step in the ring, you know what I mean. You know the, you know the corner of your head. Like, look, man, this is what you gonna shock the world. You gonna shock the world. You gonna show them who you are. Do this for the your eyes. Kids. wasn't crazy either. It wasn't like it was a man. So John Jones was like, he he said after the fight, and they were talking about previously. I forgot my man from France who he was uh, who he's fighting, but it was like his last mm -hmm. fight. You know when he. <clears throat> get down on the mat it's a little suspect so in my mind i'm like okay everybody's gonna critique themselves you know he can go back to the training to the to uh -huh. the drawing board and say look i gotta get better on the floor you know when they get to that wrestling shit, i gotta get better there i can probably throw the hands with the best of them but i gotta get better here yeah. john jones after the fight was like look i already knew if we got to that point i've been wrestling since i was yay high i knew it was a rap but was, typically ball he is striker right like he don't really Submit guys, like so. I'm not, I ain't gonna sit here and act like I'm a, a UFC, <laughs> you know, <laughs> expert, but you know, I can sit down and I, I can listen very well to what you know people are talking about, you know what I'm saying? So if a don't admit, like, look, I knew if I got him here, it was a wrap, sure enough, man. I felt bad for my man for a split second. Nah, you, you can't. Hey, them, 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 them warriors, man. You can't. They yeah, some warriors, but shit, yeah. you can, shit. And um, I feel bad. You can feel bad for some warriors every now and then. <laughs> You're like, damn. You know what covered that ring, man. But Francis, I, I and just like you, I'm not a huge UFC expert. I'm not gonna pretend to be. Um, and Francis, I believe he left UFC for like. Probably might. I know it's been a lot of money issues with Dana White and shit, and the fighters not get what they um, see, feel like they're worth, and and a lot of other issues there. But uh, I, however, I hope it can happen. I hope that fight can happen. I know it's been a lot of shit talk between the two. So it was a tweet that Francis sent out. I saw the post game interview when uh, Chan called him um, called him out of his name. Not Chan. I'm sorry, Bones Jones. I kind of get these brothers. Hey, speaking of these Jones brothers. Yeah, I played with one of them, Art Jones and uh Indy. I actually saw him getting in, in a fight with a teammate too, and he had a mean hip toss. <laughs> I don't know if you were still on the team at that point. Nah, mean was, hip toss. Was, uh, yeah, that was gone when the Arthur came. Yeah, so 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 big art. I think he 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 was a a championship level wrestler as well in his younger days. But you look at these brothers, man. You you look at Papa Jones there. Hey, the boy's done good, man. John Jones, current UC, UFC heavyweight champ. 
former lightweight heavyweight champ, Super Bowl champ Arthur Jones. Oh, and what, Super, Bowl. Which Super Bowl was that for Arthur? <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, Super Bowl. Uh, <laughs> well, they, uh, when they beat the S- Niners, right? Yeah, yeah whichever yeah, one that yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, I, I'm lost with the Roman numerals. I ain't gonna lie to you. And then Chandler Jones, obviously Super Bowl champ as well. So hey, hey, it. imagine imagine that household though right growing up. As man, as brothers, I know you you got you got a you got a uh, five five brothers. Yeah, you got five brothers. So I can only imagine. And they kind of all it can't be that they can't be that far apart as far as age wise either. Nah, not at all. They don't look at it either. I think Art is the oldest. I think it goes Art, Bones, Chan. Mm-hmm. I think um, so. Yeah, and we talk about the hair lot like being, being the guillotine. I know, I know the boy had all type of breaking all type of furniture in that man, crib. What as well as the Lord in that household. Shout out to the Jones family, man. Man, yeah. John J grocery bill had to be through the roof. Man, what? I know it was with us. We just just eat shit just because we knew we had to eat it before somebody else would. Competition from the the minute you wake up in the crib. Hell yeah! So be hammer. Twenty nine matches, seven submissions. So um, yeah, man. Ho- hopefully we see that fight, but probably not. Probably ain't gonna happen. We know the business getting away of some good fights. What else we got, man? Want to get to some questions we got from the internet? Got to do that. Got some good ones, too. Oh, we did want to talk about the job and rent situation. You want to do that before? Yeah, let's do that, man. Let's do that. Let's talk about this job situation, man. Um, We should have got the Jalen Rose clip. I think he spoke, uh, yeah, for sure. he spoke really well on um how he said he felt as though he was job ja Morant when he was coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the people that don't know, you know, it's been a, a lot of back and forth with John ja Morant, different issues that, you know, either him or <clears throat> some of his guys be getting into, you know, Indiana Pacers situation. Um, uh, another situation, I guess, with a 17 year old, not sure exactly what what happened there. Then um, just most recently, post on his IG live. Um, I guess he was in the club, feeling good, had the, had the, uh, the hammer, the, had the, the little, had the little piece, that little, little 22 on for <laughs> sure, a little piece. Um, and then, you know, it's just a, a lot of talks on John, just like where he's at, you know, mentally or whatever yeah. the case may be, you know, the, one of the faces of the league, um, face of the Memphis, uh, Memphis Grizzlies, man. And just some of the decisions that he's, he's making. Again, not that you know, account got to take accountability. You know, one hundred percent. Yeah, got to take accountability as a as a as a grown man, um, as a role model. Even if you don't want to have that title or accept that title, but it is what it is. Like, what are your thoughts on just you know some of the things that's been going on? And again, you know, we all make mistakes. You know, we all yeah, learn. Sure. Um, <clears throat> learn from our mistakes, but just you know being a superstar you know everything that you do is going to be in the limelight it's going to be there so your your mistakes that you make is going to be on another it's going to be amplified every every every, everything you do is under that microscope and uh you know it just comes with it and you are like you said nba superstar one of the faces of the league that that responsibility um just comes with it even though you know you're a young man and, and young uh, young people, old people, like everybody makes mistakes, but everybody gonna be looking at you. And uh, it's a lot, a lot of people saying a lot of things um, about job, about, you know, his upbringing, where he's from, what he's doing. Um, but this is something I know me and you have, have you know, kind of seen a lot of. And, and now it's more, you know, people putting it actually on their own social media. I feel like back in the day, this something, maybe somebody caught, somebody else caught you uh, recording you in the cut, doing something you had no business doing, but um, to, with those issues you mentioned, going into it, and then you flashing the gun on your IG live, that's just stupid. You know, yeah. it, 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 it's dumb. Um, you carrying the gun or you are being armed or anything like that, I personally don't have any issues with that. Um, you know, you, you, you legally obtain your firearm to protect yourself, 
whatever reason, you know, you ride around in nice cars, you live in a nice house, you wear jewelry, you do all these different things. Yeah, people, young people, you're a target. You know, a lot of people are a target. You get armed security, you protect yourself when you are a superstar like that. Um, but you, there's no reason for you to go beyond that and doing that flash and sit it's on the, the socials. You move, man. You gotta yeah, move you, you, you got you got to move better. You got to be, a, you know, be smart with the circle you keep it around you as well. Because I know if I was even trying to do some shit like that, you know, my big brothers, my uncles, my people, that was my boys, like they, they, they wouldn't be going for that, you know, because they knew it wouldn't be in my best interest. And I had no, nowhere near, you know, the eyes on me that Ja Morant does, man. But it's, it's young. Hopefully it's a learning experience. And uh, one of the things ja, uh, Jalen Rose said was, you know, nobody got hurt in this situation, right? It wasn't a situation where, you know, somebody got injured, somebody lost their life or something like that. So it's, still a bad situation that you can learn from he took full yeah. responsibility to your point uh, a lot of people say hey man his dad is that i ain't got shit to say about his pop i feel like his pops has done a great job to get him to this point to your point you're a grown-ass man and you become you know kind of like the leader in a sense of your crew of your family when you are put in this position so ja gotta continue to make um better decisions which i think better decisions which i think he will and this was Ja's statement um, if you haven't had a chance to see it, uh, quote, I take full responsibility for my actions last night. I'm sorry to my family, teammates, coaches, fans, partners, uh, the city of Memphis and the entire Grizzlies organization for letting you down. I'm going to take some time away to get help and work on learning better methods of dealing with stress and my overall well-being. And, um, you know, obviously take what you want to take from that. You never know yeah. what people are going through behind the scenes, what people are putting on for. Uh, but super super talented uh young man and i'm hoping that uh he, he turns things around and continue to do um you know what he's been blessed to do yeah no for sure um the people that you keep around they could be assets or liabilities um and they and and you Say gotta that. be yeah. you gotta be you gotta be wise with the people that you keep around you especially when you are um a person of you know job magnitude just speaking of yeah. being a face of the nba so your friends the people that you keep can be assets or liabilities if they allow you if they're not questioning you if they not smack you upside your head or whatever yeah. ask you questions man you got to get those type of people out to mm -hmm. circle to your point i had a real good crew like nah ab we're not doing that nah ab mm -hmm. we're not going you know what i'm saying it's just those yes. type of things that friends they know like you okay you are the guy you are the guy where you know you have the ability you have a, the potential to help everybody in your circle and uh, again if you fall off the wagon then you know what's gonna happen so you gotta have those friends that's gonna check you i don't care how much money you make yeah, yeah I mean, you gotta have those friends that'll be able to check you and to your point to his pops yeah he i think his pops has done a great job of Getting, to, getting him to where he's at right now. Josh still a young man. He's 23 years old. I can go back mm -hmm. and think back at 23. I was making dumbass mistakes. Yeah. You know, 38 now, still making mistakes. You know what right. I'm saying? Again, to the to the point that you made at that time when we was 23, it wasn't social media crazy. We wasn't able to go live when, you know, had probably had one too many drinks. Who knows? Mm -hmm. what they, what people are saw on ab's live you know what i'm saying that 23 yeah. who knows i'm not gonna see and say like i'm perfect but pops can still because shit till this day pops my pops still pulling me aside boy you dumb as hell like you know what yeah. I mean? so pops can still be be that father figure but again i think he's done a great job with job getting him to the to the point where he's at always seeing him supporting him at his games yeah and like you said man hopefully Jai can take this time off reassess look yourself in the mirror um and get back to you know being that being that guy that he is for sure man because this um you know we always talk about failures obviously tough to deal with young or old success it's probably tougher to deal with it's yeah. probably harder to deal with when you're in a place where you you know 21 23 years old and everything and anything is at your disposal you can go anywhere you want. You can do anything you want to do. You can, you know, drive what you want, wear what you want to do. And, you know, do you want to make better decisions? Absolutely. And um, it, this is something, man, anytime something like this, it always make, reminds me of, like, 
LeBron, like how he came into so early, like 17, 18, 16, he was and how he his career has been. Obviously, everybody's not gonna be LeBron, but keeping good people around you, making these decisions. Uh, and you gotta mature faster too. You know, yeah. it's just part of it, honestly. You know, it, you got you are given a lot, you are earned a lot. Um, I guess that's a more accurate statement. You've earned a lot more up to this point. So you're gonna have to do a lot more to protect that and continue to let this grow, man, because shoot. Josh, he could be a four, five hundred million dollar man by the time he walk up out that NBA and change, you know, generations. So, and then outside of that, it's a lot, a lot of kids looking up, you yeah. know, to John Morant. A lot of kids are looking up and are are very impressionable and are going to be, um, you know, it's a lot of kids looking up to you. So you are yeah. a role model. Remember the Charles Barkley? I'm not a role model. I'm not, you know, but people are watching you on your IG live. People watching what you do, what you post. So just be mindful of that as well. And once again, continue to be that superstar on the court and off the court, man. I, I still remember some great things that uh, I'm sure he's still doing great things in the community yeah. back in his hometown and in Memphis. So I hate when things like this take more of a and neg negativity is always going to get more eyes, more talks more things so hopefully Ja comes back with the team whenever he does and picks up not where he left off here but before that let's get back right Ja. let's get back right Ja. yeah facts 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 <clears throat> all right get to some of these questions man from the m2m live crew bryce mccullough at drunk swagger underscore <laughs> why the old line why the old line been running to 40. Does it really change their draft stock that much to risk the injury? Hashtag M2M Live. What's your thoughts on that, AB? Great question. Um, Great question. Watching the um the combine the old lineman, you can tell. I don't know if he tore or how bad, but he definitely <clears throat> pulled his hammy running the 40 yard dash. Hate to see that. But I don't know why they're running the 40. Again, man, this is one of those um events to combine you know you got everybody there they want to see our guys will go out there and um and run so our point yeah. you know we talked about uh old lineman from B byu earlier mm -hmm. on the train, um blake freeland you know he yeah. went out there and had a great um 40 inch vert well not 40 inch, but 37 inch 30, vert. Yeah. um and then he ran the four the four nine eight forty so in that turn it's like damn like that's great, you know. So I think that's one of the reasons why, just so people can say, "Hey, this guy did good," but naturally, you know, you really want to see a ten yard or twenty yard burst from an old lineman. Um, yeah. You know, and really, that's what they kind of look at. They that ten yard split, see what that is. So again, if we go back and we kind of critique the the combine, you know, we always talking about the shield. How can we improve year in and year out? I think that could be one thing that they can kind of come back on and say, "Look." These old linemen, they they don't need to be run forties. Like if we're gonna do anything, a just cut it down to twenty yards. But to your point, I don't see why old linemen are running forty yard dash still at the combine. Yeah. Right there with you, get that ten yard split, maybe a twenty. You just get that ten yard split. I, but I, there have been linemen, I'm sure, that have improved their uh, status. I think Tristan Wirfs was on them all out he, he blew a lot of people um out of the water with his performance uh obviously went on to be a great young player as well but good question yeah good question um jack nevitt vikings beat writers reporting that gm questy spoke on jay jettas having some input on personnel thoughts on the dog of a receiver getting so much franchise input Hashtag M2M Live, hashtag pay JJ, hashtag pay Lamar. Hmm. Hmm. Um, that is interesting, you know, him having input on uh, personnel decisions. Uh, he is young, obviously. Uh, and then when you have that type of quote or comment coming out, who knows what type of input that actually is. If it's just a conversation with one of your players that you expect to be there uh, for a long, long time, which I'm sure – um, the Vikings organization does. I don't necessarily have an issue with that. Um, but, you know, is he in the war room making calls, making a decision to go with that guy over that guy? I doubt it. But, um, you know, he's a young player, a young superstar playing this league. I'm sure he still knows or have some connection to some of these players that are coming out 
or you know maybe hitting free agency soon so having i'm never opposed to having a conversation when you're a decision maker with players um i think that's always good to have some type of input some type of conversation with your players especially ones that are going to be there long term so i don't necessarily have an issue uh with this at all how you feel about this ab no, I'm right there with you. I'm pretty sure even when you was playing, you know, <clears throat> Jim or head coaches could have, hey, D-Buck, what you think about this guy? Like, what have you heard mm -hmm. about this guy? Like, how you think he'll fit in the locker room? Um, you know, I know I've had those conversations as well. So as a GM that's tapped into your team, tapped into your guys, you know, you want to hear from your from your star players. Like you said, somebody that they see that's going to be there for the long haul. Hey, what you, what you think here? Uh, what are your expectations here? Like, do you think this type of guy – can come in and fit in uh what are your yeah. thoughts on this guy coming out and you know you were teammates with him in at lsu so i'm right there with you i don't think it's i think you get more positives out of that than you can get negative so facts. anything to help your team win facts good question another good question um got a guy with the countdown 186 days until nfl football at the real mtp 1994 question to the pod does the team make a move for Ramsey before the draft or after it what will the asking price be for the Rams take a first rounder for next year for Ramsey hashtag m2m live hmm I don't know I feel like we always surprised by what players go for um as far as compensation wise we kind of know what it is with quarterbacks now we kind of know hey it's gonna be a couple firsts and this and what did the Rams give didn't they give up a couple first to get Jalen yeah yeah they gave up a lot to get him too um i'm not sure what it depends on the team man you, if you're gonna give up that pick and then obviously you have to pay him a bunch of money too uh it's gonna be interesting i have been seeing reports linking him to the cowboys which would be interesting because you assume that they're gonna have to pay trevon Diggs coming up pretty soon yeah um hmm i don't know though i don't know i saw alan robinson was giving permission Allen Robinson was giving permission to wide receiver to seek a trade from the Rams. Uh, but I don't Didn't know about this Jalen Ramsey. What you what you think is up with the Rams? You think they trying to <laughs> they try to, you know, they got obviously they let Bobby Wags walk. Um, yeah. you know, signed that deal last year. We all kind of knew it was a lot of fluff on it on, on the back end after the first year. Um getting the Ram, uh, Ramsey reports. Allen Robinson, I think that was a big miss in free agency for some why some reason that that just never um sunk up out there. Yeah. I don't know, man. McVay, he, he came back. He said he's back. He's committed. Aaron Donald obviously still there. I think Stafford has said he's coming back as well. Cooper Cup would be healthy. Uh, I think they're just trying to move. We know they don't have a bunch of draft capital. Move so some pieces around. Get, yeah, move some pieces around, maybe get some more draft capital. Um, and, and just build that roster out because it's going to be tough when you have those contracts and those lack of high picks in the draft. So um, who knows what the Rams are up to now, man. But they, I feel like they got what they paid for. You know, they yeah. they, they pretty much went all in to get that ring. Lombardi. Hey, you got that ring, you got that Lombardi, you're going to be a champion forever. They, nobody can take that from you, man. Aaron Donald, Matt Stafford, Sean McVay, uh, Jalen Ramsey. So um, who knows what they're doing now? But shit, they, they got what they paid for. Any thoughts on the on the Rams? Man, I, shit, they even, even um reports of letting Floyd go. So I think yeah. I'm trying to get some picks somehow, some way. Um I feel like they might have the nucleus still there. Mm -hmm. But got your quarterback. You got your quarterback, you still got a, a dominant force um in the interior with, with Aaron Donald I don't know man we have to see yeah obviously they got a plan <laughs> they got a plan that we don't we don't know about stunk it up last year had the one of the worst Super Bowl hangovers I've seen obviously that was some injuries as well but it was it was it was stank out there but um uh, you got these last couple a b what were your thoughts on the week of the NFL Combine when you guys were in your playing days? From Trashy Stoner, what were your thoughts on the week of the NFL Combine when you guys were in your playing days? Um, I know for me, I mean, it's always interest, interesting, interested to watch, um, see how the guys come out, perform, yeah. um, you know, 40 times. Um, you know, again, you know, after football season, you know, some football stuff on, always watch. But as a player, I really didn't 
tap in too much. And then obviously um, we both went to the combine. So I think my experience that week was an eye opener as far as how grueling that week was just mm -hmm. with physicals and getting up early and being out, uh, staying up late and having interviews and things of that nature. But um, and then now, you know, we kind of in the, in, well, not kind of, we're in the media space. So got to talk about yeah. those things. So I think it's just kind of three, three different viewpoints as being a participant, being a player, just kind of seeing it and now being on the media side. So, yeah. I feel like uh, every at every level is kind of, for lack of a better term, it's kind of lost a little bit of luster <laughs> at every level. Because when you're in it, when you invite, when you get that combine invite, and you know, I went to a, a kind of a small football school at the time. A lot of people, UConn, were definitely not on the map when it came to football. So I felt like that was my opportunity. I went to the Senior Bowl as well, but I felt like that was another opportunity, a huge opportunity for me to be on the same field in front of the same evaluators and everybody doing the same shit, whether it be drills, 40 time verts, whatever it was, interviews. And um, so that was, that was my time. You know, you kind of, you know, sizing everybody up that's out there yeah. in, in, your, in your group, the other corners that you've been hearing about all year, but you haven't really, you know, seen them. And obviously you're not playing football, but you get to have some, you know, some one-on-one -on -one and, and, and compete in those drills. Um, so, so that was definitely interesting. Like you said, the, the, I had a knee injury coming out, so the medical part of it was grueling. My, it was early mornings, late nights, um, and by the time it was over, I, by the time it was time to run, and I was ready for it to be over already, honestly. Um, knowing how important it was and how big it was, it still was a big moment, but it was so long, I felt like pause. Um, but it, it was a, an amazing experience, right? It was a, definitely an amazing experience, a once in a lifetime experience. AB talked about it being the biggest interview process of your life. That was a dream of mine from, you know, probably five years old. And then actually sitting in front of, you know, these decision makers, these coaches, these GMs, these DB coaches, um, and actually being in there, being in Lucas Oil. Like, I was like, oh shit, like I'm, like, I'm really out here. Um, so that, that was all um, an, an amazing part of it. And then as a player, didn't really, you know, you watch for the 40 times, you know, if somebody was going to break the record or somebody was going, that was pretty much the only thing I was watching for. And, you know, who was going to jump higher than me or do, you know, run faster than I did. Um, and then now in the media space, I feel like I almost don't want to watch it because I don't want it to mess up my my real idea of this player that I'm even watching on film or seeing play on Saturdays. So uh, I guess that's my full answer on the, the combine in all three levels as they be spoke on. <clears throat> yeah, man. Boots to passes. <clears throat> How much is enough for the number one pick? And who do you think is most likely to pull the trigger? Mm, good question. Who is most likely? You know what? The coach should be. The coach should be, and, and, and honestly, when you are trading up to get somebody you believe in, you know, these decision makers, they do all the interviews, they do all the, the other conversations with, with people, you know, at the different universities, maybe family members, maybe high school coaches, and then they got all the tape, obviously, and all the combine stuff. So if you feel you got the conviction to jump up there and get your guy, I don't necessarily think a price is too much to pay. So, it's, you know, who knows what it's going to be? It's going to be a bidding war, I expect, or how Ryan Poles, the GM of the Bears, is playing it. But um, if I had to bet on the team that's going to be actually picking number one, I'm going to bet on the Indianapolis Colts. I think we jump up to one. I think the pressure is on everybody in that organization from uh, Jim Irsay to get a quarterback uh, that's going to be the quarterback of the future into win and win now. So we got a new coach there with Shane Steitman. Um, and they got to go get their guy, whoever that guy may be, C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, uh, A.R., Levis, whoever it's going to be, I think the coach jump up and get that number one pick. And honestly, if they turn out to be good, who cares what you jumped up there and gave up um, to get them? What you think, A.B.? No, I'm with you, man. Um, <clears throat> if a team do jump up, it's like, you know, what's important to you? Hey, look, I need, to, I need this quarterback. I'm looking to – this is our number one guy on the board. Mm -hmm. We got to fill this position at quarterback. 
Um, to your point, I agree with the coach, man. I think they could, they should they should do any and everything they can do to get to that number one spot and bring a guy to that building. Um, <clears throat> past couple of years, you can see we've been lacking in, at that position. So yeah. if, it's, if it's a guy that played that position that's in this draft that you love, <clears throat> you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, yeah. So that's how I kind of you know I agree with you there. Like you know, I don't care what we have. How, what can we do to trade up and get that yeah. spot? So, sure. got to go do For it. Sure. For sure. For sure, man. Good questions, man. And uh, appreciate everybody that jumped on. Jumped on with us, man. We obviously been, what are we off? Three weeks? Been, <clears throat> been off for, for a minute. Yeah, ain't three weeks. We, Super Bowl week was, obviously Super Bowl week in AZ. And then uh, that, that, uh, what was that a Friday we went on and then now we mm-hmm. back March 6th. So appreciate everybody jump back on with us, man. We'll um be back on Thursday. So yes, Monday, sir. Thursday, 10 o'clock Eastern time, same place, same time. And obviously, if you miss the show, you can always catch um, you know, you can go back on YouTube, catch a video, or download the pod wherever you listen to your podcast at it's the man to man pod presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. Hey, hit the same game parlay last night. I expect to hit some more coming mm. up on Wednesday. I think I'm going to have my next one. I forgot which game I picked. It's going to be one of the nationally televised games on Wednesday. Um, somebody already beat AB to it. Already to it. Shout out, Brad. <clears throat> Get your 30 minutes in, baby. Get a little sweat on. Start your week off right. Health is well. Appreciate y'all tapping in. Yes, sir. Here we go. Don't.